It's also very likely that the future of the internet is going to continue to, to try to satisfy our need for speed. Over the past couple decades, particularly wireless networking has gotten faster and faster and faster. And that's important because most of us are now pretty used to the freedom and the flexibility that our mobile and wireless devices provide us, whether it's a laptop or a smartphone. Um, you know, desktop computers connected to really fast fiber optic network can be blazingly fast, but unless we're gaming or doing things like that, a lot of us are using our mobile devices more and more. And so it's more and more important to try to deliver faster and faster connections to those mobile devices. Now here's the problem. Remember this diagram? U.S. Uh, frequency allocation chart. And you know, if you remember, we looked at this before and we saw that the bands that are available for what are referred to as industrial, scientific, and medical communications were all the Wi-Fi traffic and all the Bluetooth traffic and all the you know, 15.4 traffic for IoT devices were all of those communications go on is this tiny, tiny little sliver here. And if you remember the Shannon Capacity Theorem, Fundamentally, given you know a certain amount of noise, if I want to go faster, I need more bandwidth. So if I have a fixed amount of bandwidth that I've been allocated, there's only a certain speed I can get to. It doesn't really matter how many fancy new techniques I use to try to encode the signal, I can't go above a certain limit. And so what wireless researchers are starting to do is explore new parts of this frequency spectrum, and particularly explore parts of the frequency spectrum that are fairly underutilized. Now, here's the thing. So the, this is sometimes referred to as millimeter wave networking. So there's people looking at um, sort of trying to build wireless networking technologies in very, very high frequency ranges. And there's two reasons for this. Um, well, there's one reason mainly, which is that there's more, you know, despite this chart, there's actually more underutilized spectrum up in these regions. And so I can get a bigger chunk of bandwidth to use for my connection. And remember, Shannon Capacity Theorem, more bandwidth, faster speeds. More bandwidth means more bandwidth. Right. So um, now here's the problem. You might be wondering, why is there all this spare, spare space up in the millimeter wave range? Why hasn't this been utilized? It hasn't been utilized because it's hard to utilize, because the propagation characteristics of these signals are terrible. So for example, Wi-Fi, uh, the frequency range that we use for Wi-Fi and for cellular communications, those signals, they'll go through walls, they'll go through buildings to some degree, they'll penetrate various types of solid spaces, and that's really important. So I don't have to have a line of sight connection to my Wi-Fi router in order to use it. The router can penetrate, the signal from the router can penetrate a few walls and it can get to me even if I'm in another room of the house or if I'm in another room on the same floor. Not true with the millimeter wave uh, range. That range has a propagation characteristic that's much more similar to visible light. So I turn on a light in one room, that light is blocked by walls. It's not going to escape the room. And so designing communication systems that can operate using these types of signals is much, much, much more difficult. I need to have, you know, potentially very highly directional antennas um, using sort of steer, electric steering that I can do on both the transmitter and the receiver. And I need to worry a lot more about the environment. And of course, mobility makes this much more difficult because as I move around, you know, um, if I'm walking and I sort of, you know, go under a tree, my cellular signal doesn't drop out because the, the signal can penetrate the tree. But if I'm starting to use these much higher wavelengths, those wavelengths cannot. They get stopped. It's like I'm walking through a shadow from the sunlight and suddenly I don't have a connection anymore. So there are some serious engineering challenges. There's also silicon challenges as well, which I won't get into, and just designing the transmitters and receivers that we need in order to be able to transmit and receive these signals. So right now, the devices that we use to operate in the millimeter wave uh, range consume so much power that there's no way that you could ever deploy them on a smartphone. Your battery would run out in like five minutes. So there's lots of sort of engineering and technical challenges we'll have to overcome. But the goal is to get out of these areas where we're limited in bandwidth and look into some areas where we're not. And it's possible if we can overcome these engineering challenges that there's just so much more bandwidth available in some of these other frequency spectrum ranges that we'll get much, much, much faster signals. So I think it's very likely that through a variety of different technologies, whether it's millimeter wave, visible light communication, improvements to the internet backbone, uh, better use of the existing spectrum, we are gonna see faster and faster wireless connections in the future and that's really important because most of our connections are going to be wireless and most of the new people that we're bringing online will also be using wireless devices.